Welcome back. I want to thank you for joining me on yet another adventure. We are now leaving Jekyll Island and crossing the Sydney Lanier Bridge, the longest spanning bridge in Georgia, stretching 7,779 feet and 480 feet at its highest point. We are continuing our journey along the Georgia coast, going in the footsteps of history. We are making our way to Fort Frederica National Monument, located on St. Simons Island. In my last few episodes, I have mentioned Fort Frederica multiple times. If you want to learn more about colonial Georgia history, make sure you check out my other videos, Macintosh Sugar Mill Ruins, and Early Georgia History, and the William Horton House Ruins. But I got a question. Are you ready? Ready to go off the beaten path and check out what remains of Fort Frederica? Follow me. What have we learned so far about Frederica? James Oglethorpe was the founder of the colony of Georgia and chose this area of St. Simons Island to build the town and fort between 1736 and 1748 to serve as the southern boundary between the colony of Georgia and Spanish Florida in an area then known as debatable land. Just over there, on neighboring Jekyll Island, William Horton, an important aide in Oglethorpe's army, had a successful plantation, and he helped feed the troops garrisoned at this fort with his surplus of crops, and he also provided alcohol to the troops as well from the first brewery in Georgia, also located on his property. We also learned in 1742, two key battles in the War of Jenkins' Ear was fought near Frederica. With the British victories at these battles, they expelled the Spanish forces from the colony of Georgia. The last key information we learned was Thomas Spalding, one of the South's greatest agricultural minds, was born here in Frederica. Let's begin our adventure by expanding our understanding of Frederica and its overall context within colonial Georgia. James Oglethorpe would build a town and a fort to protect the ports of Savannah and Charleston from Spanish attacks. Yes, that's the reason a fort and town was built, but that could have been anywhere. Why here in this exact location? Oglethorpe chose his exact location because it sat on a high ground located on a river bend where cannons could hold off Spanish ships upstream or downstream. He would build the fort close to the river so his troops could spot threats from any direction without being seen first and they could mobilize quickly to protect the colony. The marshes in this area also gave protection against land attacks and finally there was plenty of timber for building fortifications. Now let's explore the site and transition away from the history of Frederica and discuss how this town was set up, the people that call this site home, and their roles within the community. And finally, check out the ruins of the buildings that once stood here in Frederica. As we take our walk through history, 287 or so years later, envision walking through a town in colonial Georgia. James Oglethorpe's vision for an equal and self-determined society drove this town's design. How was Frederica set up? The town was created using the 1733 Oglethorpe Plan. In this plan, all cities that would be built in colonial Georgia would consist of wards, squares, tithing lots, and trustee lots. A ward consisted of a 12-acre quad of eight city blocks centered by a square which consisted of a one acre plot between the various wards. Tithing lots were residential lots comprising the north and south streets. The trustee lots were used for commercial buildings, government or civil related buildings, and these lots sat on east to west blocks of the wards. 
with the emphasis on an equal society here at Frederica. Everyone was provided equal lot sizes, consisting of lots with the dimensions of 60 feet by 90 feet, a second lot for gardening, and additional land outside the town for farming. They were also supplied simple structures like these, thatched huts, until they could build bigger and better homes. How did they determine who got which lot? Lot locations were determined by the colonist social rank. Colonists with lots closer to the fort or along the main road, which is known as Broad Street, had wealth, official colonial jobs, or military rank. Are you a samurai? We are making our way down the boardwalk, which was an extension of the military road and was the original location of Frederica's walls and gate. The tree-covered earthworks we see now is what remains of the original mile-long wall that surrounded Frederica. The construction of this wall started around 1739. The original wall consisted of sodded ramparts, six feet high, with a firing step on the interior of the wall and a moat bounded by two rows of eight-foot palisades on the exterior. The palisades no longer remain, but you can still see the outline of the wall and moat that protected this town. Crossing the threshold that was once the city gates, let's explore Broad Street. Broad Street was the main thoroughfare that connected the military road and extended from the city gates to the fort location along a 75 foot wide corridor once lined with orange trees which separated the north and south wards here in Frederica. The street was built to handle people, animals, and large carts while allowing the colonists a shaded street to stroll through town. As we begin exploring the ruins, try to visualize each house and each shop that once lined these streets. Frederica was designed with a total of 84 lots, 48 on the south ward, and 48 on the north ward. We will start by seeing the ruins down Broad Street on the south ward. In the first lot was the location of the butcher shop. The townspeople were supplied a ration of beef, pork, cheese, flour, and other goods for one year. After that, they were expected to raise their own livestock and crops. No trace of a building was ever found in this location, indicating it was either a simple clapboard house or thatched hut. Here on Lot 10 was the home of Mary Musgrove Matthews, who was born part of the Creek tribe. Her role within this community was General Oglethorpe's Native American interpreter. She was first used as an interpreter in 1733 when the colony of Georgia was founded at Yamacraw Bluff. She interpreted a meeting between James Oglethorpe and Tomochichi, the Yamacraw chief. Mary was also integral in colonist Native American relations. She also assisted Frederica in establishing treaties, recruiting tribes to fight the Spanish, she would fulfill this role as Oglethorpe's Native American interpreter for a total of 10 years. Here on Lot 9 was the original owner, John Levely Jr., who was a shoemaker by trade. Like most of the original settlers here in Frederica, he would leave within a short time period of arriving. The next individual that owned this property was Primrose Maxwell, a lieutenant in Oglethorpe's army. The foundation that lies before us was built prior to 1743 in a census in that same year described this property as a good house built of tabby and timber. Now moving on to lot 8, the Humble Holzendorf lot. John Humble was the original owner of this property and he was among the original settlers in Frederica and the owner of this lot. His profession within the community was a boat pilot and laborer. John Humble passed away four short years after arriving in Frederica and still lived in a simple thatched hut. The foundation we see now was from the next owner who purchased this land in 1743, Dr. Frederick Holzendorf, a surgeon in Oglethorpe's army. His house was a two-story, 
tabby house with the dimensions of 24 feet by 14 feet. As we continue down Broad Street brings us to lot number 7, James Mackey's house, who was a captain in Oglethorpe's army. The house that once stood here was an impressive two-story duplex structure with tabby walls and elegant brick and wood detailing. This house was possibly destroyed during the Great Town Fire of 1758. James was the commanding officer during the 1743 attack on Castillo de San Marcos in St. Augustine. In his later life, he would serve in the French and Indian War as the co-commander with George Washington during the Battle of Fort Necessity, which was a young George Washington's first military combat and the battle that started the French and Indian War. These are the ruins of what's left of the Dunbar Houston house. Priscilla Dunbar was the original settler that owned this lot. She came to Frederica with her brother, who was a ship captain from Scotland. While in Frederica, Priscilla met and married Patrick Houston, a merchant, and they lived in a frame cottage in this location. General Oglethorpe would loan Patrick money to buy a ship to carry freight between Frederica and Savannah. Patrick was also the quartermaster here in Frederica. What is a quartermaster? A quartermaster in the British Army was assigned with the important task of supervising the store and barracks and issuing supplies and provisions. Now on to Lot 1 and Lot 2, arguably one of the most important and interesting lots here in Frederica. These are the remains of the Hawkins Davidson House. The importance of this property cannot be overstated. It allowed archaeologists to determine where people lived throughout Frederica. This property also told an interesting story about a feud between two families that called these lots home, the Davidsons and the Hawkins. It was no secret these families didn't like each other or get along. The ruins located here comprise two houses which may have shared a common wall much like English row houses of the period. Let's start by discussing the Davidsons. Samuel Davidson with his wife and three children lived on the left side of this house in what is considered lot two. Davidson operated a tavern, made gun stocks for the regiment, and served as town constable. What exactly is a constable? Here in Frederica, there was a constable for each ward. The constable would enforce the orders of colonial officials both civil and criminal matters. The Davidsons would move from this location in 1741. They couldn't stand their neighbors any longer. There are two sides to every story. Let's now meet the Hawkins. Who were the Hawkins? They lived on Lot 1, the right side of this property. Dr. Thomas Hawkins was the regimental surgeon, town doctor, apothecary, and magistrate. Thomas Hawkins' wife, Beatrice, was often seen flying off the handle and quick to temper. She once tried to kill John Wesley, the famous preacher that started Methodism and preached on multiple occasions here in Frederica. Now let's double back and explore the shops and homes that line Broad Street along the North Ward. Here in Frederica, there were six taverns, each serving a specific clientele. The first tavern located in Frederica was located here on this lot. The tavern was owned by Levi Bennett and his wife Anne. Taverns in the colonial era were much like they are today. Social centers visualized being a colonist in 1738 at this tavern with common soldiers and farmers discussing issues of the day while throwing back a cold one. At taverns you could play games like you see here. Maybe a game of Farkle or Checkers. Once Levi Bennett passed away or left Frederica, the task of running this tavern went to his wife Anne and his servant Samuel Lee. Tavern keeping was one of the few occupations available to a single or widowed woman. The lifespan of Frederica was brief, but don't underestimate its importance during the colonial period as the initial line of defense in protecting the southern boundary of the colony of Georgia. Even to this day, it gives us insight into the early history of our nation 
prior to the Revolutionary War. Most of the ruins we have encountered and will still see were built between 1736 and 1749 during Frederica's first 13 years. After 1749, with the signing of the Treaty of Madrid, although it was a commercial treaty, it ended hostilities from the Spanish, and the garrisons here were disbanded, and the site went into a decline and was mostly abandoned by 1755. Now let's explore the ruins of Daniel Cannon, the original lot owner. He was a carpenter by trade, and he lived here for only four short years. More than one-third of Frederica's original settlers left town during its first five years in existence. In addition to his own home, Cannon built other houses in Frederica, including the elegant three-story brick house of Samuel Davidson at the end of the street by the fort. Cannon also made oars for boats used in Oglethorpe's 1740 expedition against the Spanish at St. Augustine. Now we're arriving at the ruins of the Caldwell House. This was the house of John Caldwell and his family who made candles and soap fine enough to export to Pennsylvania and New York. Caldwell, like other Frederica residents, wore many hats and held many different jobs within the community. He was a traveling merchant, shopkeeper, bailiff, surveyor, and conservator of the peace. The Caldwell House was one of the best in town with thick walls made from tabby. The remains of a baking oven and two fireplaces can also be seen. This is the last site we will explore down Broad Street. On this lot lived Samuel Perkins, a coachmaker who arrived here with the original settlers of Frederica. He built two good homes in town. Here is the foundation of one of those homes. Let's conclude part one, where we expanded our knowledge of Frederica by exploring the site's town walls, Broad Street, and some of the people that once called Frederica home. If you enjoyed this episode and want to learn more, please join me for part two, coming out soon, where we explore the fort location, barracks, and much more, and continuing going in the footsteps of history within Colonial Georgia. Make sure you smash that like button, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and dropping a comment. I want to thank you all for watching. Until the next one.